Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the Simscock Works F104G which is complementing the TF104G which was sold separately and well I had to think about whether I wanted the F104G when I already had gotten the two-seater version the trainer version that's the T there uh, the, but since I already have that do I really want the single-seater is it that different well we're gonna try and answer that uh, there are some improvements that I'll talk about. One item worth mentioning is the fact that it has 25 liveries that it comes with. That's certainly valuable. Uh, I, I, of course, uh, for the TF-104G, there, there were plenty of liveries and people still made more. So we can probably expect more liveries on flightsim.to. It is a popular plane. Uh, but the key sort of feature that I was interested in is the fact that we... Even with the TF-104G, we don't load the fuel in like this necessarily. For the TF-104G, there was an app, external app, to load in the fuel. For the F-104G, they have an in-cockpit pad that helps you load in the fuel, so that's an improvement. Hopefully, that will be brought to the TF-104G as well, if not, if it hasn't been already. Maybe I haven't uh, gotten the latest update. So, here is the flight, and we'll check it out. They could have come up with some better blurbs for down there. <laughs> some some sort of historical point. Okay, well, anyway, I want the mirrors there. And to get things started, we have to get the generator reset. I don't know why we always have to do the generator reset, but okay. And then we'll align that. And this goes to... I guess that was too quick. Align the INS. Maybe you'll... Oh, I think that blink is... Yeah, okay. Just blinked a little. Alright, so to get the in cockpit pad, we go Control shift j and this is it. And then we can get the tip and pylon tanks. I can't even see the wing from here. That's interesting. Anyway, so yes, we've got the tip and pylon tanks. And then we, we can load full fuel. Alright, so now we're way down, we've got a lot of drag. And also here, it's got the EPU if we need it for the full startup procedure. And uh, some flight plans to load in, uh, tack can stuff, and then the procedure list. So we actually have the regular checklists in here for convenience, so that's good too. So yeah, since it doesn't require the external app to load in the fuel, that's handy. And I certainly prefer that. Uh, worth making sure that we are using either the tip or pylon. I think we'll go for the pylon first. Pylon tanks uh, so that we drain those first. Alright, and then we are set to go. I think this will have more range than the TF-104G and maybe accelerate a little bit better. I have not activated the afterburner. Okay. Positive altitude. That is the gear sound. Collapse. Yeah, it seems to climb more vigorously. I don't have afterburners on right now. I haven't turned on the afterburners yet. I think. Let's double check. Yep, no afterburners yet. And even with the full load, it, oh, that was interesting. Uh, speaking of interesting things, I, I don't seem to have a seat. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened with that. Is this? Am I supposed to be sitting on this? This seems like the the rail for the ejection seat, but I don't have an actual seat. I don't know. Was I supposed to not have a seat? Not sure. Now this version also apparently has an autopilot, but I tend not to use autopilots on planes like this, so. I'll just leave it all be. Yeah, it climbs fairly well here. At least I think it climbs better than the TF-104G. And here it is from the outside. The most important livery, of course, the NASA livery. Very nice. We made a U-turn, flying over Edwards again. Up, there's a good view of Edwards right there.
Again, I wouldn't try breaking the sound barrier before 30,000 feet. Well, it doesn't entirely like to get up to 30,000 feet without the afterburner, though. I think I can coax it. Uh, it's definitely unhappy with that. Okay, blind the afterburner. We can certainly hear it, the nozzle position changes and everything. Wish I got the correct fuel flow. But the fuel flow doesn't change. You see, that's afterburner off. That's afterburner on. But I guess that's how the original instruments were. They didn't include the afterburner fuel. Probably it'll be much easier to go past the sound barrier if we didn't have the external tanks, <laughs> right? With the external tanks and all that drag is a whole other business. And since with this, presumably, the drag is simulated just like it was with the TF-104G. Is important. Not all planes for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 simulate the drag when you add the external tanks, so... I feel really short. <laughs> well, how are those pylon tanks going? Uh, they've got like 300 pounds more fuel. Okay, we've got transonic drag and everything. That's why we're pitching down so much. Try and let it get some speed before pulling up, though. Uh, we might be a little bit low with the with the tanks as they are. Sort of stuck transonic here. So the afterburner flame, I sort of like it better than some others, even though it's uh, somewhat transparent. Wish there was some middle ground, but that word's less blatant as some others, but perhaps a little bit more clear than this. I think I can see the Colorado River there. Okay, I, uh, well we sort of did it in a dive but we've broken Mach 1 again. Once again see if it sticks. That was from 42,000 feet. I think we've passed the transonic region pretty well now. Yep, past Mach 1.2 and increasing, but we've probably... Yeah, we've come close to depleting those tip tanks, and I'll be jettisoning the tanks pretty soon. So as usual, the tanks just sort of get us up here, and the rest is without them. Yep, we've got some buffeting. Anyway, now let me get rid of the stores. Okay, we have jettisoned our external tanks. We are now clean. And the buffeting sops, of course, would. It's those horrible little tanks slowing us down. And presumably the Drag is reading lower now here, too. Uh, yes. I don't know why it's zero, 0, though. But, I don't know. An index can be set to whatever, so... Depends on what they set their index to. That is not drag coefficient, so all depends what the baseline is. There we go, moving in front. We passed the uh, Colorado River back there, let's check the map. Indeed, we are in Arizona. I should have gone for the Grand Canyon, darn it. Oh well. That could be fun, flying this through the Grand Canyon. Nearing Mach 1.8 now, 51,000 feet almost. And we should probably climb a little bit faster here. 
twiggling around because we're in st still in thicker air while trying to go fast. 60,000 feet right there. Fuel is being used quickly now. Our ground speed is currently at 1,078 knots at 60,000 feet. Not quite getting up to that uh, Mach 2 level, but it's probably alright. Well, we're somewhere between Mach 1.8 and Mach 2. And uh, lots of buffeting at 63,000 feet right now. More or less stable though. Uh, not very difficult to fly. Getting it, getting it perfectly trimmed might be a bit of a trick though. I'll allow it to bounce around in altitude. I don't care too much about that. Well, we're getting low on the fuel quantity. We're less than half of our starting internal fuel here. We're at like Mach 1.9. I'm gonna take it out of afterburner and see how it does without the afterburner. Now that we've already accelerated up. My intention was to land at Albuquerque. We're at the eastern end of Arizona right now. So we're going down, but we're at 900 knots, but that is also going down. 900 knots ground speed. 55,000 feet and descending. Uh, well, we've got a fuel level caution. Well, we're gonna have to come out of mock speed soon, I guess. I'm gonna cut throttle. The fuel flow is not going down. Now the fuel flow is going down. Uh, okay, I didn't want it down that much. I don't know. I, I'm not the fuel flow in this thing. It's interesting. Oh, uh, let's see. Because my throttle is like 80%, 80, more than 82% right now. And I cut the fuel flow by more than 50%. I and mean, what is it at idle? Uh, yeah, it's getting low. Oh, let's not hit the red line. That is a big fuel flow range. Yeah, we're getting into a transonic region. It's not going to hold Mach 1 like this. Still, fuel flow 4,000 pounds per hour. It's not like that's trivial or anything. Just the upper end of it is really high. Also, normally fuel flow is affected by altitude more. I haven't noticed that needle being affected by altitude at all. Which is a bit strange, actually. I don't know if that's a peculiarity of the F-104, but... I mean, certainly something like Concorde, the fuel flow goes down at higher altitudes because you just get less oxygen. So... You have less... you need less fuel to mix with it. That's alright, because you also have less drag with less air outside, so it all balances out, but... Well, we should probably be descending into Albuquerque anyway. Will we make it? We have very little fuel left. Continuing to descend, uh, 24,000 feet or so. We have about 400 pounds of fuel remaining. Some of that probably unusable. Uh, this is reading uh, somewhere between 300 and 400. All right. Well, we've got the highways below us. Somewhere out there is an airport. Well, got to remember that the airport's at an altitude, so. Well, there's barely anything left in this tank, and we're not going very fast either. Uh, I'll have to throttle up here. Well, I see the airport. I can see the airport over there. Well, not so great in this view, but... Yeah, I can still see it. 
Always gives hope. The needle for fuel quality is pretty much zero right now, though. Always happens this way with me in these planes. Okay. Flaps. Landing gear. Okay, you're on the ground. Okay. And we might even be able to get off the runway. Uh, trust me, we've got fumes right now as far as fuel. Did use the air brakes. All right, so here we are at Albuquerque. And at some point the engine's gonna quit on me. Um, this looks like a nice little parking area over here. Oh, no, the engine's gone. There you go. That's how close, maybe we can roll a bit. Gonna try and roll over here. Uh, I'll need somebody to tow me. Yeah. Okay, alright, alright. You will park here. So there you have it. Uh, Edwards Air Force Base to Albuquerque, barely. Uh, with the F-104G. I mean, you'd have to be really enthusiastic about F-104s to get both of them. <laughs> I, I am. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, certainly, if you were to... If you didn't have the TF-104G and you were to really want one, uh, this would be the first one to go with. I think they've made some improvements, uh, especially with this little pad that allows you to load in the fuels and get the tip tanks in. So we can be... Oh, that load full fuel doesn't actually affect the uh, internal fuel quantity. That is worth noting. I wonder if I had it totally topped off at the beginning. Let's see, reset to clean. Yeah, it doesn't affect the internal fuel. It's just the external fuel that gets affected by... It. Oh, uh, but we have to click the load first. Yeah. Okay, so yep. That is the Sim Skunk Works F104G. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.